It's interesting, if you're familiar with Psalm 23, you know that it kind of takes a turn here, almost as if David is mixing his metaphors, which my English teacher told me you're not supposed to do. But he kind of changes pictures here, right? He, he, first, he's talking about the shepherd and, and guiding the sheep to all these different places on the journey. But then, all of a sudden, he abruptly says, you prepare a table before me. Well, since when are sheep allowed at the table? <laughs> when are they even allowed in the house, right? That's because the picture is changing here. It's no longer about a sheep uh, following the shepherd. Now it's about being in the presence of a king who's throwing a, a banquet, who's preparing a, a royal table just for you, and he's even anointing you. And you think, man, that's kind of a, a sudden shift or a strange transition from one picture into another, but it's really not that strange when you consider uh, in the ancient Near East, all of the kings were referred to as shepherds of their people? Or the fact that King David, who wrote these words, was a shepherd growing up before he became king? Or even the fact that Jesus, who is our good shepherd, is also the king of kings? It's a pretty easy shift to make as we think about our living redeemer guiding us, but then also feeding us. And so in, in Psalm 23, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He will make sure that you are well fed and nourished with all of his blessings and his goodness that you have all that you need. Now, um, pop quiz for our confirmands this morning. Um, the New Testament was written not in English, it, the New Testament was written in, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you this one for free. This one's uh, for free, uh, Greek. Uh, so the New Testament is written in Greek. What language was the Old Testament written in? Do you know? Latin, that came a little bit later, but before Latin, before Greek, there was Hebrew, right? Sorry, I put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> yeah, Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And Jesus said that, um, not one letter would disappear from my, from my word. Not one little letter is going to disappear from the word of God. And uh, when Jesus was speaking, that was uh, during the time when people uh, spoke Greek and wrote Greek. And so uh, the, the little tiniest letter in Greek is an iota. That's where we get the phrase, uh, not one iota difference or whatever. Um, that, that, that comes from the words of Jesus there. The Old Testament uh, corresponding letter would be the letter Yod. And I think, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that this is where George Lucas got the idea uh, to name that little <laughs> Jedi Yoda, right? Uh, because he's just a, a little guy and maybe his ears kind of look like this. I'll show you in a second. Um, this, okay, so this is a, the letter Yud in, uh, in Hebrew. Jesus said, none of those little Yuds are going to disappear from the word. Just, it's just a little flick of the pen, isn't it? Well, here in Psalm 23 is a place where that actually makes a really big difference. Because if you look at the first two words of Psalm 23, it says, Yahweh Roi. We're going from right to left here. So the last letter is that Yod again. The first letter in Yahweh is also Yod, but we're, we're just going to focus on the last one. So Yahweh Roi. The Lord is my shepherd. That's what it says in Hebrew. Well, let's see what happens when you take that last Yod away. It just says Yahweh Ro. And that says the Lord is a shepherd. So that little yud, if it were to disappear, that would make the difference between the Lord is a shepherd and the Lord is my shepherd. Think about the difference that that makes. The Lord is my shepherd. He knows me and he loves me. And these two young men that are here this morning, they're going to stand up here confessing their faith in the fact that the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not just that he is a shepherd, some higher power out there that doesn't really care about us. Or that, oh, he's the shepherd at my mom's church or, or at dad's church. I, I want to, to, to let everybody know that the Lord is my shepherd, that the Lord cares about me and loves me. And certainly he does from the moment that he formed both of you in your mother's womb from the time that you were very young and he put his own name on you at your baptism and he guided you and watched over you every day of your life all along the way guiding you as a shepherd leads his sheep. The Lord is your shepherd. 
and he was with you in those, those green grass days and those, those still water days, the days of peace. He was also with you during those dark days in the valley, and yet he's, he has led you up to this point, and you know that he's going to continue leading you through whatever comes ahead, whether those are in, through pastures and still waters or through dark valleys, the Lord is going to continue guiding you because he loves you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He's going to provide everything that I need because that's who he is. The one who loves us and cares for us, who guides us and feeds us. May God grant that for all of you in his name. Amen.